We're now ready to develop the mole balances for our three most important types of reactors. So these are the batch stirred tank reactor, or simply batch reactor, the continuous stirred tank reactor, or CSTR, and the tubular reactor. So we'll see two slight variations of this one, the packed bed reactor and the plug flow reactor. Okay, so uh, we'll start with the batch stirred tank reactor. And so let's show a schematic of what this reactor looks like. So it looks something like this. We have this uh, closed vessel uh, that's stirred. Uh, so uh, we have no flow of species into or out of it. Uh, since it's stirred, we take it to be spatially uniform. So there's no gradients in concentration or temperatures within the reactor. And typically we know the concentration of all our species at time equals zero. So once we start the reaction. So um, our starting point here for all these reactors is going to be the general mole balance that we saw previously. So for some species J, we can write that the flow, uh, molar flow rate of J in minus the molar flow rate of J out, plus the generation of J within the reactor volume is equal to the accumulation of J with time. So for our batch reactor, we have no flow of species in or out. And again, because it's um, stirred, we take it to be spatially uniform or well mixed. And so therefore we can uh, represent the generation of J by reaction as simply the product of the rate of formation of J times the reactor volume. If we take the uh, volume of the uh, reactor to be constant with time, we can also uh, represent the uh, change in number of moles with time in a more convenient way. So we can write the number of moles of J as the concentration of J times the reactor volume. And so if we're assuming that the volume doesn't change with time, we can take the volume out of the time derivative and cancel it with the reactor volume on the left-hand side of the equation. So this gives us a simple mole balance for J, that the change in concentration with time of J is equal to the rate of formation of J. Okay, so this is again our uh, constant volume, uh, well mix mixed uh, batch stirred tank reactor. Okay, so the next uh, reactor we can look at is the continuous stirred tank reactor. or CSTR. So this looks a, a little bit like the batch reactor, but we operate it continuously. So we're uh, with time adding um, species to the reactor and removing species from the reactor outlet. So again, we can start with the general mole balance that the molar flow rate of some species J in minus out plus the generation of that species by reaction within the uh, system volume is equal to the accumulation of the species J with time. So typically we assume that the uh, CSTR is operated uh, under steady state conditions. Uh, so this means the time derivative of all our species is equal to zero. And uh, like the batch reactor, we assume that it's uh, spatially uniform or well mixed such that we can write the generation term of J as just the product of the rate of formation uh, times the reactor volume. So this simplifies our mole balance to this algebraic equation. And often you'll see this uh, solved for the reactor volume. So the reactor volume is just the flow rate molar flow rate of species J in minus the molar flow rate of species J out divided by the rate of consumption of J. So often you'll also see um, the molar flow rates represented as the uh, product of the volumetric flow rate times the concentration. And so we'll see how 
the units here, the molar flow rate has units of moles per time and the volumetric flow rate has units of volume per time. And finally, our concentration has units of moles per volume. Okay, and so our last important class of ideal reactors is the tubular reactor. And so we'll look at this for the plug flow reactor, but the treatment is quite similar if we have a packed bed uh, reactor as well. Okay, so let's see a schematic of what this reactor looks like. So essentially we have a reactor here that's a uh, cylindrical pipe. So here we're going to assume that the velocity profile is flat. So um, species travel through the reactor uh, as sort of a plug. And so we have no uh, radial variations in either composition uh, or temperature, but we do have reactants uh, being steadily consumed down the length of the reactor. So we could have uh, you know, some molar flow rate of species J into the reactor and species J out of the reactor. So um, the composition is going to change down the length of the reactor. And typically we assume the uh, plug flow reactor operates at steady state like we did for the CSTR. So we can write the general mole balance that FJ naught molar flow rate of J in minus the molar flow rate of J out plus the generation of J by reaction in the system volume is equal to the accumulation in the reactor with time, which again, if this is uh, operated in steady state, uh, that time derivative is going to be equal to zero. So here, uh, the rate of formation of J is not spatially uniform uh, over the whole reactor. Um, so what we can do is take a differential slice, so a cylindrical cross section of our reactor, which is sufficiently thin that we can treat it as spatially uniform. So let's see what this sort of looks like. So we're gonna do essentially a shell balance here where we have a very thin slice uh, of our reactor such that we can uh, approximate the rate of formation as just the rate uh, under those conditions times the volume of that differential slice. So we can do a mole balance on this differential slice. So we can write that the molar flow rate of J coming into this differential element, so at a position V down the length of the reactor, minus the molar flow rate leaving that differential element, so at V plus delta V, plus the rate of generation of uh, J within that differential element, so R of J times delta V, where again, we're taking this differential slice to be uh, spatially uniform, is equal to zero since we're operating in steady state. Okay, so we can solve for R of J here. So it's just gonna be equal to F of J at a position V plus delta V minus F of J at a position V divided by the volume of that differential element delta V. So if we now take the limit as delta V goes to zero, so as this uh, slice becomes infinitesimally small, uh, the right-hand side of our equation just becomes the definition of the derivative of F of J with respect to V. So now we can write that R of J is equal to the derivative of the molar flow rate of J with respect to volume. So this is our mole balance for the tubular plug flow reactor. And uh, we can have, do a similar treatment, treatment for a packed bed reactor that has um, catalyst in it. And there the mole balance is just going to depend instead of on reactor volume, it's going to depend on say our weight of catalyst, so amount of catalyst. 
Okay, so in the next few videos, we'll see how we can apply these uh, mole balances for different situations for our ideal reactors.